Hey everybody, it's Mergle, and today I want to make a Cataclysm World Boss farming guide, and I kind of hope as a community we can work together to do this because my obsession has gotten the better half of me this time, and uh, I haven't farmed these two patterns in a long time. The two patterns which I'm referring to are for tailoring the High Society Top Hat, so High Society Top Hat, and for jewel crafting it is rhinestone sunglasses I dropped my enchanting which I had almost every recipe unlocked because I'm like a completionist I take the recipes even though they aren't relevant I just wanted to fill out the the uh, learn thing and I had almost every single enchanting one I dropped it for the sake of doing this because when you kill these world bosses they are very very hard to find and very difficult to get a kill of but when you do they have a chance very minimal to drop these patterns from all the searching I've done over the years and all the articles I've went through and all the forums and stuff I have only ever seen maybe like 20 confirmed people there's probably 50 or so in the entire world but I've only ever read like in the 20 range that's it when you go to their wow heads you can see that they have the recipe so they must have gotten it and uh Almost all of them say they did it through world bosses. Some say they got it as random drops from cataclysm mobs, but the majority of them, it's world bosses. So I'm making this guide in a hope that we can work together, and I'll explain more in detail. But first, I'd like to say the there are two add-ons I recommend you getting. I will have them in the description, but if you listen to me, NP scan, NPC scan, and NPC scan overlay. So what that does is NPC scan will trigger whenever you go near a rare mob and NPC overlay puts these nice fancy colors all over your map to indicate where bosses can spawn or rare spawns or all that good stuff so Akmahat Akmahat I don't know how you say it Akmahat <laughs> is the world boss that I'm going to be looking at first but the reason is I really want to get these patterns one of them I mean there, I don't think there's a single person in the world that has both of these patterns, and uh, it's amazingly rare just to have one. If you look at it, 50 people, I'm estimating, in 7 to 10 million have this. It's probably rarer than the Black Kiraj Mount. That's how rare this pattern is. <laughs> these patterns are, not just this pattern, these patterns. That's how rare they are. And um, these bosses can spawn on very strange but very specific timers that's uh the first thing we're going to go over so on the us servers obviously it's a little different and you're going to have to uh account for that if you're watching this as a european servers but on the us servers eastern standard time tuesday is the reset time and the servers are up at around uh, for Eastern Standard Time, it's uh, I think like 2 p.m. for me, but for the coast where Blizzard is located, it's 11 a.m. So if the servers come up at exactly the normal time as they're supposed to at 11 a.m., the first opportunity that one of these world bosses can spawn is on Friday at 11 a.m. They cannot spawn 72 hours after a reset that's the shortest they can spawn so if the very first occasion for this to spawn would have been a couple hours ago like three hours ago on this day since there was no resets in between if there's a reset at all between this day this day or even this day you're pretty much gonna screw yourself these bosses probably won't even spawn that week at all so assuming no resets happen any bear between now you're in now you're in the spawning range is what I would call it between 11 a.m. on Friday until 3 a.m. on Sunday and this is the West Coast time for me it would be like 5 a.m. Sunday because it's two hour difference but so oh no excuse me three hour difference so it'd be 6 a.m. but um, anywhere between this time so all the way from 11 a.m. Friday to 3 a.m. Sunday these bosses can spawn 
if they happen to spawn early on Friday, they also have another chance to spawn again Monday. So this is weird. Um, I will try and explain it in the description. If you're being confused about this, I will explain how it works a little more detail in the description. I will type it out so you can understand it. But 11 a.m. base time, so the West Coast blizzard time. I was using my time because I'm Eastern Standard, but um, blizzard time, it's 11 a.m. So if you need to calculate that, I will put it in the description, the time frame, and then you can see what time that is for you, European fellows, because I know it varies where you're located. But if you want to watch this and calculate your own time frame where these can spawn, so you can try and get this, I will do it. Now, to get into the bosses. The spawn times, that's how it works. Very difficult. I will make it very detailed in the description. Just look for that. The first boss is where I am located. Right here in Uldum. So you come down to Uldum. You can get here in many varied ways. You can take the teleport from either Stormwind or Orgrimmar, depending on if you're Alliance or Horde, respectively. If you haven't done the quest chain and don't want to bother with it, you could always come to Caverns of Time via teleport through New Dalaran or the old Dalaran, which <laughs> I mean, wherever you happen to be located, you can take Caverns of Time portal there and then come over to Uldum right here. He is very large, so you'll see a picture somewhere on the screen here. I'll put it up for you. Each world boss has their own unique drops. In his case, it's a belt. But they also are guaranteed to genuinely, though, this is how it works. When you kill a world boss, it will drop its unique drop that's 100% guaranteed to it. And it drops another world epic from Cataclysm. So any random world epic, typically. And then usually a pattern. It can be an enchanting pattern. It can be... Um, any of the other patterns like it's it's pretty much a guaranteed that it's their their drop world epic and then a pattern of these patterns it is possible to receive high society top hat and rhinestone sunglasses that's why this is really the only way to farm them but it's very difficult to get these world bosses so if you're coming here I'm going to be checking from this point onward, every evening, very late, at all of the various locations. I'm going to move to the next world boss and show you in a second. But very hard because with Cross Realm Zones, there's less bosses being spawned. You're looking at only six bosses. Um, it's just a very, very difficult process. And uh, they're very, very limited. But going to move to the next world boss. And I'll see you in a second. The second world boss is Zeriona. And this big pink circle around the Temple of Earth in Deep Home is where she can fly. So you're way up above everything. You come to this big circle of rings way above everything if you're going to come looking for Zeriona. She's probably, I would say, one of the hardest ones to get. Because she's in a fairly high traffic location. Deep Home, even in Legion, has a lot of traffic because of uh, various quest lines and stuff, you know, just the way it works. Um, and on top of that, you also have people that still camp for Anax, and these blue circles are Anax's spawn spots. So Anax is uh, still highly sought after. There's definitely, I bet I, if I look right now, I can I bet you somebody's in deep home. See? Look, I bet he's camping for Anax. Or he's doing his quest line. So, there's generally people here, and this is probably one of the harder ones to get, but it's not impossible. Um, she has her own unique drop as well, which you'll see here. It's a pair of gauntlets. And, um, of course, she drops the same items as the other ones. So, it'll be her unique drop, and then some other epic as well as a pattern let us move to the next one the next rare is julek doom julek doom is in this blue area he patrols back and forth you'll see him he's, he's quite large but in case you need a picture of him <laughs> of course i'll show it he's uh pretty ugly to be honest uh but other than that, he does have a unique drop, just like the others. His is a 
dagger. Um, and like the others, he follows the same drop. So his unique, epic pattern. This one is probably, I would say, your highest chance to get in terms of the world bosses. And the reason being is, is he's in such an odd location. So uh, it's in Twilight Highlands. How many people are coming to this spot in Twilight Highlands? Just saying. Um, I can't think of any class campaigns or really anything that brings you in this area. I'm trying to think of something, a necessity to come here. And just nothing's coming to mind unless you're completing quests and you're trying to get lore master and things like that. So uh, high chance, I'd say, if you're going for these guys, probably the best chance. Julak Doom. So again, he'd be this pattern you see there. So come up here. Maybe you pick one up. This, this is probably your best one. <laughs> Anyways, let's move to the next one. Our next world boss is Gar. He is located behind... Sulfron Spire in Mount Hygel. So his name is exactly the same as it was in um, Molten Core and stuff. He patrols this little path up and down. And uh, this is one of the few world bosses that I've managed to kill. I've actually done so, I think, three times <laughs> in a uh, couple of years. And um, he's just, uh, you know, you know, you, he drops a belt. Just like the others, his own unique drop is a belt. Then the other epic and a pattern. I've gotten like stupid patterns every time. But, you know, this is one I can actually confirm I've managed to kill. Which is surprising because you think with Fire Lance being right here, he would get killed a lot. I know it's behind him. And uh, I don't really know if coming to Fire Lance can trigger NPC scan to go off. It may be too far of a distance, to be honest. But uh, I was surprised that this is the one that I've actually managed to kill on a few occasions. So, let's move to our next one. Alright, our next world boss um, would be Mobus. Poseidus is on the world boss timer. I wouldn't really consider him a world boss because he has so low HP. But he is considered a world boss by the mechanics in terms of like how he drops his stuff. So we'll talk about both of them. Now Mobus is in sheer numbers the one I've killed the most. Um, and most of those kills were back in Cataclysm. He drops a harpoon. So it's a polearm. Very nice looking. Sells quite well if you manage to get Mobus kill and uh, sell the harpoon. Anyways, that's how he spawns the... Abyssal Depths over here in this circle. I feel like it was about this height somewhere in here. And uh, he's just, he looks like a whale shark, just like the other ones, but he's a rare world boss whale shark. Now, as for Poseidus, Poseidus is on the world boss spawn timer. Poseidus um, drops the same loot, except his unique drop is a mount. And, uh, very, very expensive mount. It usually goes in the 500 to a million range, so it's very expensive. And uh, for collectors, they'll pay it because they don't want to camp him. He's very hard to come by, just just like the other world bosses. He also will drop a world epic, and then he will drop a pattern, a bonus item. So the pattern um, is usually how it goes. Mobus or Poseidus can spawn here. And uh, I have killed him on, like, two occasions here, and uh, one occasion here. So he has four lo spawn locations over here, and then a fifth one over here. But my luck has been here, so not saying it's a better spot, just saying that's where I happened to find him two times. Um, he's very low HP, so it will you will pretty much kill him with anything you do. The other ones might survive one or two abilities, but Poseidus only has like 100 KL, so he, he'll die from pretty much an auto shot. And, uh, yeah, this one's the harder one to get. If you're going to camp, come and see these rares, I would recommend doing at least the first beginning few quests to the point you can get Sea Legs and the, the Seahorse. The Seahorse is a mount specifically for the zone, but it moves very fast in the water. And... If you don't have those, 
at least have the mount unlocked on somebody because even your ults, if they don't do the quest line, can use the mount. And if you happen to be a warlock, you could use Unending Breath. It's just an option if you didn't want to do the quest line again. Um, all of these are very rare. Um, there's one thing I want to go over because I, I, I can't confirm it. I have absolutely no idea the truth to this, but Poseidus and the world bosses seem to be multi-tag. So in a group of five people, they killed Poseidus because Poseidus is the most camped one. Since he drops the mount, the mount's worth a whole bunch of money. And a guy who multi-box tagged it with all five of his characters being in the same group. So all of them received personal loot and got items as if they were personally killing Poseidus. So it was multi-tagged. And um, that's why I say we need to work together to do this. And... It was multi-tagged, so that meant five more Poseidus's were killed, essentially, than normally would have been killed. And that is really nice. That means I'm going to guess that the world bosses probably share the same thing. So, I'm asking your help, because we, we want to make history here. This is what I want to do. <laughs> um, I will be putting the character that I usually flip with in the description, the character's name. If you are on the U.S. Alliance side, you could. Is if I'm online, that character is likely online, standing in Shatra, doing doing sniping. So if I'm online, that character is probably online as well. You can whisper that character, and let me know, and I will come on Murgle and come to any of these locations. And what I want, what I want you to do, okay, to ensure you get loot. I recommend you be a tailor and a jewel crafter on the character you intend to farm these with. That way you have the potential to get one of these very, very exclusive patterns yourself. Um, but I want you to like punch the mob, okay? Just punch it so you get the tag and then you can get loot no matter what. If somebody were to show up, they can't steal, you know, just shoot it in front of your face and you wouldn't get nothing. You understand? So punch the mob and then I will log on Murgle. And come help you kill it. I want to get it on video of getting one of these patterns live. I think that would be absolutely amazing because I don't think that has ever happened before. And if the world boss that I kill by your character happens to drop the pattern, I will give you 1 million gold on my server so you could buy 10 tokens. And then you could turn those tokens either into game time, that'd be 10 months, or you could go on to turn them into battle net balance as 150 bucks essentially you could turn on battle net balance for whatever you choose but i think it would be so cool to get one of these patterns live and it, it is very hard for me to kill these world bosses because i will check in the evenings every night from this point on on friday saturday and sunday just to try and get one of these fellas but i don't see it happening alone so my sniping character's name will be in the description the description will include things like their spawn times. Um, that way you can adjust for your time. I'm not trying to discourage you European people because obviously European people can't invite me to a group and stuff. But I do want you guys to go out there too. It would be so cool to get like people getting these patterns. I'm sure these world bosses get killed all the time by people who don't have tailoring and jewel crafting. And that means there goes the opportunity that this would have happened. These patterns are that rare they're just so rare unbelievably rare like i'm telling you i i i can almost guarantee less people have these patterns than people have the black kiraj mounts okay and that's the probably the rarest mount in the game and less people have these patterns than that mount so anyways thank you for watching let's do this let's make history <laughs> and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.